debate, the Honorable Minister of Infrastructure and Communities. Well, uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, I'll be uh, splitting my time with the member from uh, Edmonton Centre. Mr. Speaker, uh, let me start by sharing an experience that I had meeting with the uh, oil workers in Fort McMurray when Prime Minister and Minister of uh, Natural Resources uh, and I visited that community uh, a couple of weeks ago. We ran into a number of workers who take pride in the work they do. And they come from all over Canada, from Atlantic province, from Ontario, and I sat down with some of the workers who come from British Columbia who work in the energy sector. They take, they take pride in the work they do, Mr. Speaker. They take pride because the work they do help them feed their families, put their children through school to get better education. They take pride because the work they do help them save enough for their retirement. But they also take pride because the work they do generate revenues for the government so we can provide services that Canadians rely on. Better hospitals, better schools, public transportation system, clean water for communities to drink, affordable housing that people need to succeed in their lives, or women who face domestic violence when they need a safe place to live, they have a shelter. Those workers help us build that infrastructure, that help us build welcoming and inclusive places for all of us to call home. So I experience that pride, and I experience that pride each and every day, the workers that I interact with throughout this country in my visits from coast to coast to coast. Mr. Speaker, I'm a proud Albertan, and I'm proud of our government that after extensive consultations, we approved the Trans Mountain expansion pipeline. I want to reaffirm, I want to assure everyone watching today that we will get this pipeline built. We will get it built because this pipeline is in the national interest because this pipeline will create thousands of thousands of well-paying jobs for Albertans, for British Columbians, for Canadians. This is a pipeline that will allow us to take our resources to non-US international markets so we can get a proper price for our natural resources to help pay for the services and programs that those working for Mokumari, the workers, I interacted with are so proud, so proud to do. I would like to remind the members on the opposite, the members of the previous Stephen Harper government, how they failed to advance the interest of Alberta's resource sector. For 10 years, Harper Conservatives talked a good talk about, but failed to build a single pipeline to take our resources, oil resources, to non-US markets. I would also like to remind them, Mr. Speaker, that the struggles that Alberta families and workers have faced over the last number of years started when Harper was in power. More than 25,000 resource sector jobs were lost in the last year of the Harper government. What did, they do, what did they do to help those workers, Mr. Speaker? Absolutely nothing. They even held back the infrastructure investments of nearly $1 billion that would have made a difference in people's lives at a time of need. So when we took office, Mr. Speaker, we started changing that. Our government immediately started looking for solutions to support Alberta workers and families and help the provincial economy rebound. In March of 2016, we provided $250 million 
in fiscal stabilization funding to government of Alberta. At the same time, we significantly extended EI benefits for Alberta workers who needed them the most. And in 2016, Export Development Canada provided $750 million in financing, grantees, bonding instruments, and insurance to oil and gas companies. And in July of 2016, Business Development Canada and ATV Financial partnered to provide $1 billion aimed at making more capital available for small and medium-sized businesses in Alberta. And in March of 2017, our government announced $30 million, which unlocked $235 million to accelerate the clean of orphaned wells over the next three years. My department, Mr. Speaker, Infrastructure Canada, has provided support to more than 150 provincial, municipal, indigenous infrastructure projects that are leading to over $4 billion in joint investments in infrastructure in the coming years for Alberta communities. These measures have helped the Alberta economy rebound. In the last 12 months, Alberta has gained 50,000 full-time jobs, and unemployment rate is at the lowest point in almost three years. We know that more work needs to be done, and we know that oil and gas sector are an important role to play in keeping this momentum going. That is why our government approved two oil and two gas pipelines, including Trans Mountain expansion. That will help get more of our resources to the markets we already have and open up new markets so we are not so reliant on our neighbor to the south to buy, to buy our oil. Our government supports Trans Mountain expansion as well as the Keystone, Key Keystone XL pipeline because we know they mean better price for oil, but more well-paying jobs for Canadians. However, we also know that TMX is not just important to Alberta. We approved this pipeline because it is in the national interest of Canada. It is in the national interest of Canada to create thousands of well-paying jobs, not only for Albertans, but across the country. Mr. Speaker, it is in the best interest of Alberta, Canada to find more efficient and safer ways to transport natural resources to the markets. It is in the interest of Canada to receive a fair price for those resources that is possible when we essentially have only one customer. It is in the interest of Canada, Mr. Speaker, to partner with indigenous communities, respect with the respect and recognition of the rights, and ensure traditional knowledge is integrated into our decisions. And it is in the interest of Canada, Mr. Speaker, to develop our natural resources in a way that does not compromise the environment. In fact, Mr. Speaker, in the 21st century, the only way to have a dynamic economy is to ensure a sustainable environment. That is why our government introduced $1.5 billion ocean protection plan. This plan to safeguard the health and safety of our coastal communities and sensitive marines in marine areas is the most significant investment Canada has ever made in protecting our oceans. It is also why Canadians feel confident that Trans Mountain pipeline expansion will not jeopardize BC's beautiful coastlines. Mr. Speaker, there are First Nations who are going to benefit from this. But most importantly, this project is necessary because it is in the Canada's national interest. In closing, Mr. Speaker, let me remind Canadians that uh, the, the leader of the official opposition today mentioned through the media that he does not believe that taxpayers' money should be used to fund infrastructure projects. <laughs> we can't agree with that statement. Because as a Minister of Infrastructure, I can assure you, Mr. Speaker, there are a number of projects in the official opposition leaders' writing that are being funded by the public sector investments. That public dollars are being used to build public transportation system in our city, to use 
public dollars to build better transit, better wastewater and clean water systems and other infrastructure that our communities need. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Absolutely. Yes.